Hello, and welcome to Topper Machine. My name is Josh Topper. Um, today we're going to talk about a project I've been working on for quite a few years, or more, more acquiring the pieces and, and working on a little bit here and there. Um, but it's a project we're going to start filming and uh, start showing the build of it. Um, it is a miniature gray drum drive tractor. These were built in the late teens, early 20s. Uh, they started, I believe they started in New York State and then they moved their headquarters to Minneapolis, Minnesota. Is, is, I think is how the history goes. Uh, they used a Waukesha four-cylinder engine and a big steel drum in the back for the propulsion. They're quite simple, pretty unique. Uh, I've seen a couple of them in person and I always liked them. One of those things that you just don't see, they're pretty unique. Uh, so I started acquiring pieces and um, so this, this motor right here that is all done up, painted up and looks pretty, this is a Wisconsin TF. Um, it's a two-cylinder Wisconsin gas engine uh, that I redid to mimic the four-cylinder Waukesha that is used in the gray drum drive tractors. So the colors match a couple of them that I've seen have been painted this green and the gray. Um, so this is going to be the power unit for the, the gray drum drive garden tractor. So I'm going to call this a garden tractor because it's going to be pretty small, um, but still function as a, as a full size, uh, be useful for, for just about anything I want to do. It should be good in the woods, should be good in the yard, tractor shows, whatever. Um, it's it's uh, just a unique unique opportunity to build something pretty neat. So we're gonna uh, start working on this over the next you know year maybe two. It's gonna take a while because um, always something gets in the way. Uh, this is a hobby. This is this isn't really a, a um, priority. So this is going to be a fun little project we're going to work on as, as time allows and get it closer to done. So like I said, this is the motor. This has been gone through, uh, I probably had this, got this six, seven years ago. And uh, I bought it on an online auction. It had been, it looked like it had been laying in a, in a mud puddle for many, many years. There was actually dirt encrusted on the side of the motor. Um, and as you can tell, it cleaned up really nice. Uh, it took a lot of work, um, but it got it there. A uh, few missing pieces, but it uh, came out really well. And this is going to power the hydraulic pump that's going to run everything on this gray drum drag tractor. So this was kind of the first piece to get me going on this, along with one other piece that. Uh, we'll discuss here shortly, uh, which is the rear drum. And uh, so right now I'm going to grab the camera and I'm going to take you around the motor and let you see the motor up close and, and then uh, we'll go in back and look at the, the rear drum. So again, this is a two-cylinder Wisconsin, a TF. It's uh, air-cooled. Um, I believe that's an oil bath air filter. It's been so many years since I had it open, I don't remember. Uh, it's a magneto ignition, hand crank start. And I had put on new plug wires when I redid this, and I bought the wires that are um, more era correct. You know, the the cloth wrapped nice wires. And there is the data tag. So pretty nice looking little motor for for what it is and um, runs really well. It uh, took some time to get it get it all cleaned up and working right, but it runs really well. So let's uh, let's go back in the welding shop and take a look at the rear drum and and uh, 
what I've got done so far back there, and then uh, then we'll discuss uh, where this is going from from this point. So this is the drum and the start of the frame. Where I'm squatted down is where the motor and the hydraulics and the, everything will be. Um, and then ahead of me, out here, is where the front axle sits. So, now the story on this drum is I did work for a company that did uh, built nothing but asphalt rollers. And they had their, their non-articulated rollers, little, just little uh, one ton and, and up to I think five ton rollers for parking lots and driveways. But this was one of the two drums for their articulated uh, prototype. And they got a long ways on that prototype, but they decided to eventually scrap the plan. Um, they were just about just about ready with it and decided to scrap it. I happened to be there the day that uh, the owner of the company walked out and told the guys to dump these in the scrap bin. Um, so I, I caught him quick and I said, hey, before you scrap those, how much do you want for them? I'm interested. And he said, well, how about $100 a piece or for the pair? And I said, load them up. And so I took them home and they've been sitting here for, oh, going on five years too, um, before I finally decided to start putting this together. So this, there's a plate here and here, and it's hollow. There's, there would have been a bearing on each end that supported a vibratory shaft, and that was an offset shaft that spins in there. This is a dual vibe machine, and then it's uh, bolted onto the outside with the drive motor and the, the suspension and everything. So I had to build an axle based off of what um, was already with this, this drum was already set up for. So it was already machine true here on the, on the plate. So I just had to make my axle shaft. And instead of doing one shaft, welding it all in, and then, you know, someday having a problem, this axle is split. So in the center of the drum, one end of the axle has a sleeve over it welded on, and it makes in with the other side of the axle. So when you slide it all together, everything makes so that it really can't flex. It actually makes it more like a one-piece axle. So if my bolts ever broke or something ever happened, that axle is basically a rigid axle. So let's let me grab the camera and just walk around this thing and kind of explain a little more what's going on here what, and uh, show the, the axle, the sprocket, and the bearing. And uh, then we'll move on to the, the front axle part of this. Okay, so this is the inside, um, the right-hand side of the drum. And if you look in there, you can see where that axle bolts in. Like I said, that's split in the center, so they, they mate together inside the drum. And then the axle shaft comes out, and there's actually a hub. I don't know if we can see this very well with the lighting, but there's a hub welded to the axle that's machined true to accept the sprocket. And that is a 60-pitch um, 38 tooth sprocket. And of course, I'm running on I got these from a customer too that was throwing them out. They were used, um, but they were still good. They, they, their preventative maintenance program, they throw these away every time they replace something else in the system. So these bearings are, they're like new and they're in really good shape. They're a double row tapered roller bearing pillow block. And these are mounted on the slide too, so I'll build a a chain tensioner or a, um, a tensioner assembly that will get mounted here to push that back to take up the slack in the chain. Now this side of the machine is actually where the driver would sit. This is the operator's, the seat would be back here and then all the controls and the steering is, it's all off the side so you got good visibility and if you research the grade drum drag tractors at all they're 
there's a little bit of information out there and a lot you can learn just from from what's online. Um, they're pretty unique. So if you get a chance to look into those at all, the gray drum drive tractor, um, and you'll see just what's going on here. This uh, section back here, it's about 12 inches wide behind the drum. That's the operator's platform. That's a, that's a little deck that'll be back here. And it's driven on both sides. So if you do have a chain failure, you still got one more chain. So, and the chain, the sprockets are timed. When it was all put, when I put it together, I set it up with a level and set everything perfectly by two teeth. So they're timed, they're matched. So when I do the drive shaft for the, the drive sprockets, then I'll have to time the, the keyways on that and we'll be, we'll be, uh, doing the video on that too to show how to do that and how to get it, the keyways to, to match. Um, so actually, the way I've been doing it is a pretty simple process and, and uh, I think everybody will enjoy seeing, seeing that and be able to learn how to do that uh, very quickly and, and effectively. So this axle I got from a friend. He had bought it years ago for a project that he wanted to do and he never got around to it. We don't know what it's for. Um, we're assuming a car. Don't know. Uh, it's got uh, mechanical brakes and everything is there except for the, the arm to operate the brakes. They're a mechanical drum brake. Well, I got into this and I decided that this axle just is not, it's not close enough to the original for me. So, I'm going to build my own. So we're going to use this as a sort of as a pattern to learn from, um, but we're going to going to just start over and try to do it exact as close to the original design as we can. Um, considering there's not much information out there, just a few pictures and the, the handful of them that I've looked at, um, we're going to do it as close to as it can be. So. Right here is one of my front wheels. And what this is is 16 inch pipe. That has been machined true. And then it's a piece of half inch plate welded in there and bored and drilled for a trailer hub. And that is a trailer hub in there. So that's what we're going to be using for our spindle and, and everything there. Um, let me see if I can flip that up and show you just what if you can see it. This was chucked up and I machined off a bit of the surface of the plate so that there was a positive engagement, a true square engagement for this hub into the to match the wheel itself. So that's been machined. Um, that's, uh, and both of them are done. This, this spindle is, I decided not to use this spindle. I've got a different one with a square out here. And we're going to use that instead, which will make this a little easier to bore it and bush it, um, and get everything to work out for us as far as the steering goes. So that's where we're at so far with the, the gray drum drive garden tractor. Um, I said this, this project came about several years ago, like I said, when I found or stumbled across some of these at tractor shows and I fell in love with them. So this was a project that uh, I'm kind of passionate about and want to see finished. Um, we got started on this mostly because I was having a conversation with my wife with everything going on in the world and people getting sick and dying and I'm not getting any younger. If something happened to me, this is worth $100 in scrap. There's, it's not worth much, but if it's completed, it might be worth something, and I can play with it. So this project uh, is going to get pushed forward a little bit, um, but it's going to take some sidelines here and there just due to outside work, um, paying jobs. Um, the steam traction engine is, is kind of a, a priority to get that done because we're, we're pushing for uh, getting the final inspections all done here probably around May um, to get that uh, certified and 
finalized and on the sawmill for the summer. So there's, there's several things that are in the way um, that we're going to work on. But uh, this, this gray drum drive garden tractor is uh, something we're going we're gonna to work on and we're going to do videos as we go and, and uh, show, the, show the design, the build, the pro process um, and uh, hopefully teach you guys some, some tricks and some machining tips and, and uh, give you some uh, give you some creative pushes <laughs> to uh, do, do things like this yourself. Um, your home shop, you can, you can do all kinds of fun stuff and, and uh, I know seeing these videos kind of gives you the push to, to try harder on and uh, learn more things with your home shop. So hopefully we can all grow together and, and move forward with this. Um, just want to let you know the next video we're going to do is probably going to be a um, ball bearing guide for a um, bandsaw. Got a customer that needs guide, you know, a bearing guide set up. He's running a carbide um, friction guide now and, and they're just not working well. So we're going to swi switch that bandsaw over and we're going to build, design and build the guide. Um, and uh, proud, uh, probably after that, we'll start on that front axle for this gray drum drive garden tractor. Uh, feel free to uh, follow us on and like us on Facebook at Topper Machine LLC. Uh, you can visit our website, www.toppermachine.com. And uh, make sure you subscribe to, to my channel here. And, uh, we're going to do lots of videos like this, lots of lots of learning, and and uh, I'm hoping that, uh, like I said, hoping we can all learn something together. So until next time, let's uh, get in the shop and let's get it done right the first time.